What's up guys, it's Manny. Today I'm back with another video all about my college application process and how I ended up at UBC. So as I said in the beginning, I'm going to be talking about what colleges I applied to, um, my results from those colleges, and also how I ended up choosing um, the university that I'm currently attending, the University of British Columbia and um, some general tips that I have for choosing colleges and stuff like that because I know that it is this time. I feel like it might have passed already, but I just wanted to give some tips in case you are still choosing what college you want to go to. I'm going to be leaving timestamps down below of the different sections of this video. I have my stats, I have the colleges that I applied to, my college story, like if you want to hear about where I applied, where I came back, I heard back from, stuff like that, and then also tips to help you with your college choosing process. So I'm going to leave those timestamps down below. Um, you can click to the section that you want to go to. If not, you can just watch this whole video and learn about where I applied to college and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't think I've ever said the word college more than right now. So let's get started with the stats. Um, I have this little post-it note here of what I wrote down because I'm actually, I just finished my first year, so I applied two years ago to college. It was a little while ago, but yeah, I wrote down everything. So like all the other students applying to US schools, I took the SAT. Um, I took the new one out of 1600 instead of the 2400 one, just cause I think the first time I took it was the summer before grade 12. And then the second time I took it was um, at the beginning of grade 12, like October of grade 12, I would say. So the first time that I did my SAT, I got a 1430 out of 1600. Um, there's two sections, right, reading and math. I got 760 on math and then 670 on reading. Yeah, that's right. Um, on my essay portion, I did do the essay portion because some of my schools required it. I got a 6, 5, and a 6. So it was like, okay, I'm not really good at standardized testing and like exams and stuff. So I wasn't too hard on myself, but I knew I wanted to try again just in case like in hopes that I could do better. Um, so I did it a second time in the in the beginning of grade 12 and I got a 1430 again. But this time I got a 790 on math and a 650 in reading. So super scored, that'd be a, a 1450, not a 1430. Super scores when they take like the highest scores of all the times you did the SAT, just in case you didn't know. And then on the second essay, I got a 666. That sounds bad, but yeah, that's what I got. So those are my standardized test scores. I also did one AP at, in grade 11, which was AP stats, and I got a four. So, yeah. I'm just not good at final exams. Like, I know I'm not the most competitive international applicant, which will probably explain, like, the results that I got in the end, but, like, I was proud of myself for even trying, you know? So at the end of grade 11, um, my school doesn't do GPA, so we only calculate, like, the averages of our courses, so, like, we take the percentages that we have and then calculate the average with that. So at the end of grade 11, I had a 92% average. In grade 12 first term, I had a 90% average and then basically I applied with those two averages. So those are all my stats. I'm gonna go on to the schools that I applied to, my application story and like kind of just like grade 12 first term in a nutshell for me. So my process is a little bit complicated because, I wouldn't call it complicated, it's just a little bit different because I didn't really know what I wanted to do at the beginning of grade 12. At the end of grade 11, when I was thinking about what colleges I wanted to apply to, I thought that I wanted to go to film school because I was in film class in grade 10 and 11 and I just loved it. I liked it more than anything else that I did at school. Like, sci sciences were not for me. That's still true to this day. And I thought that I didn't really like history and stuff like that. And that was basically all that I was exposed to in high school. My school didn't have like social sciences courses like psychology or stuff like that. So I never really had the opportunity to try that kind of stuff in high school. So I didn't know that I liked it. So that kind of explains what kind of schools that I applied to. I have my list of schools that I applied to right here. All right. And like the programs that I applied to. So how the college application process works, if you don't know, is that you kind of apply to three different levels of schools. I have, you have your backup schools, which are schools that you kind of know that you're gonna get into for sure. You have your like middle level schools that are like, oh, you think you'll get in, but maybe not. Like you're not gonna like for sure get in, but like you have a good chance because your averages and stats line up with the like mean of the school. 
And then you have your reach schools, which are basically schools that are really competitive and low low acceptance rates. And you don't know if you're gonna get in, but maybe you just wanna try. And at the end of grade 12, um, I thought that my dream school was USC, which is the University of Southern California. I thought that I wanted to go there really, really bad and like basically just wanted to get into the film school there, which I know the film school is really hard to get in because it's like a 3% acceptance rate or something, but I just wanted to go really bad. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over like all the schools that I applied to and also the programs that I applied to and then talk about the results. So my first school that I applied to was Chapman University. It's located in Orange, California, and I did early action for the film production program there. Then after I applied to Chapman, I applied to USC film production program as well through the Common App. And then I applied to UCLA film production program through the UC application, which is different from the Common App. After I finished my American applications, I did U of T and I applied to the Cinema Studies program. Then I did Western University or the University of Western Ontario and I applied to the Media Information Technology program. I applied to McGill in the Bachelor of Arts um, Undecided General Arts. Then I applied to UBC. First choice was a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film Production and the second choice was Bachelor of Arts. And then my last school that I applied to was UC Santa Cruz in the undecided Bachelor of Arts. So as you can tell, I kind of applied to a range of schools, like all different types, all different programs. I This is because I had no idea wanted, what I wanted to do, honestly. I thought I wanted to do film, but the more I thought about it and the more that I went through the application process, I was like, I don't really want to do film anymore. So because of that, my portfolio because if you apply to a film school you need like a portfolio of all the films that you've made and stuff my portfolio was not as good as like people who are truly passionate and dedicated to film like people who actually want to get in i kind of just was like oh i think film is for me i kind of want to do it but my films were kind of half-assed and the only things that i did at school and never really did anything outside of school now i'm going to move on to results because that's kind of scary so I think the first school that I heard back from, oh no, I know the first school that I heard back from was Western. Um, I'm not cover my address, but basically they mailed me this in the mail and I also checked my application portal um, in December and I got in, which was pretty exciting. I might include the clip of me opening it because I know I filmed it. If I can find it, I'll put it in right now. Um, I just checked my Western University portal. Oh my God, it says I got in. No way! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like. Wait. Oh my gosh. I'm just. I got. Okay. Sorry. I just wanted to film that, but oh my god, I got to do it. Oh my god. But yeah, so I got in and I was really excited because it was like my first university acceptance and I was like, oh my god, like this is so exciting. Got in, there's like a bunch of like application packs, uh, packages and like housing stuff that's all in the stuff that they mail to your house when you get in, but yeah, got into Western. The second school that I heard back from was the University of Toronto and they mailed you this thing, which was so freaking extra, but like, oh, it's not focusing. Yeah, so it basically like has like, congratulations, you got into the University of Toronto. Um, this was the Arts and Sciences program, Cinema Studies major, so I got into U of T. Also between like February and April, I also got into McGill for Bachelor of Arts. Um, and then in February, Chapman came out and I got rejected. I was not super sad that I got rejected because it was a film school, so it was really based on like the creative portfolio and not something like about my stats or anything that I could have changed, if you know what I mean. But I was still sad because I visited Chapman in the winter break of grade 12, I think, before I, like after I submitted my application, but before I heard back. And I really, really liked the school. It was so pretty and like the, city of orange is so nice i thought that i'd really fit in there and stuff but i didn't get in so i guess it was not meant to be then i heard back from usc 
I also got rejected. I was totally not surprised about this one because the USC film school is so hard to get in. But like, yeah. And also, I was thinking, like, the more that I thought about it, USC is such an expensive school and it's like, I didn't think that it was that worth it to go for an undergrad, but I didn't get in, that's okay. Then I heard back from UCLA and I also didn't get in, but that is fine. I wasn't too excited to go to UCLA anyway. I really didn't see myself there just cause, I don't know, it's like a big school and I just didn't see myself there. So I wasn't too sad about that either. Honestly, rejections, rejections didn't really phase me that much because I always had a positive mindset. I was like, I always know that there's gonna be something better. Um, the universe is telling me that there's another path for me out there that's not at UC SC or UCLA or Chapman. So then came my results from UBC. So this was a little more complicated because as I said, I first applied to the film production program as my first choice and then Bachelor of Arts in my second choice. So I ended up not even finishing the application for the film production program at UBC because at this point, I really did not want to go to film school anymore. Like this was probably December or January of grade 12. And I kind of realized that I don't really want to go to film school because I think there's a lot of other things that I haven't tried yet and I don't want to close off those doors and like just straight head into the fine arts right away. Which if you want to do that, it's totally fine. I understand if you're totally passionate about film, like by all means go for it. But the thing is, is that I wasn't totally passionate about it. Like I was like, I don't know. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to film right away. So I was kind of on the fence about that. So I stopped the application completely. I finished my Bachelor of Arts application, but um, didn't finish the film production um, one. So of course I got rejected from the film production program because I didn't even hand in an application. Um, but the problem was that I also got waitlisted for my second choice, which was a Bachelor of Arts. The thing with UBC is that if you don't get into your first choice, they'll automatically waitlist you for your second choice. So it doesn't matter like if you put solder or something else, like you're gonna have to be waitlisted if you don't get into your first choice. Um, and then they'll kind of like let people in off the waitlist as people start rejecting or like accepting offers and stuff like that. So I was waiting for my UBC offer, still didn't hear back yet, I was on the waitlist. The same time that I was doing all of this, UCSC, UC Santa Cruz, also emailed me about applying to their school like as a late application. This was like in March or April and they were like, Oh, if you just want to pay like a one-time fee of seventy-five dollars, we'll let you. We'll take your UC application and let you apply to our school. I don't know. I just didn't really know if I wanted to go to UCSC, but I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Let's just apply, see what happens. I don't know. I got it rejected from all my American schools, and I kind of want to see if I can get into an American school. So yeah, I applied into the humanities cluster, um, undecided. So bachelor of arts, basically. Then a few days later, after I got waitlisted by UBC, I checked my portal again and I got in. And I didn't realize how happy I was to get in until I got in and I was literally crying in the grad lounge with my friends. Like, I was so happy that I got in. And I think this was one of like the preliminary signs that showed how much I wanted to go to UBC and how much it was like meant for me to go. But yeah, I'll talk about that later. And then after that, I got into UCSC as well. I got an email that I got in, which is pretty exciting. I was like, okay, I got into an American school. Like my SAT paid off somehow, but yeah. Um, so basically I had offers from U of T, Western, McGill, UBC, and UCSC. For a long time, I thought that I was gonna be going to the University of Western Ontario, which I got accepted into the Media Information Technology Program until I realized that I really had to think about what I wanted to do in the future and with, like with my degree and like see what kind of possibilities are open for me and also like the location of the school. So one of the biggest things that turned me off from the Ontario schools was the actual location. Um, it doesn't seem like a big thing because you're thinking like, oh, education is more important than like the conditions of the school. But no, it, it is equally as important, if not more important, because if you're gonna be moving away, that's gonna be your new place, your new lifestyle, your new 
area of living and it's definitely going to play a big factor into how your life changes like what lifestyle changes you're going to have to make and stuff like that so i knew that the ontario schools were way too cold for me i hate the cold like i already hate the rain in vancouver but yeah so ontario schools were definitely way too cold for me and that was like the biggest thing that turned me away from those schools. I was still thinking about it. I think the one that I was thinking the most about was U of T. I knew McGill was way too cold for me and also just like I didn't see myself going there. Um, but yeah. U of T was like probably the Ontario school that I was considering the most. This was because um, Western is in a really small town in Ontario called London and I just am not a small city person. I think I thrive best when it's like a big city. I have the freedom to go wherever I want and I'm not trapped where I am. Yeah, so I think Western and McGill were like the first ones off my list, even though Western was like the one that I thought I was gonna be going to for the longest time. So now it's between U of T, UBC, and UCSC. I think one of the biggest things that turned me away from UBC at, for the longest time was that I wasn't going to be moving away from home because UBC is really close to where I live or like I'm from Vancouver. Um, I thought that, you know, I wanted the experience of moving out and becoming independent and stuff like that and I didn't think that UBC could give that to me just because I'd still be at home. Mm, I think that was the biggest thing that turned me away from UBC. Other than that, like. I like that I knew people who were going to UBC. I wasn't gonna be all alone in the beginning. And also that the Bachelor of Arts program was so freeing. I could take whatever courses I want as long as I eventually meet the requirements for graduation. Yeah, UBC seemed like something that was really good for me, but I just didn't want to stay in Vancouver. That was like my biggest point. UCSC is very similar to UBC in a way in that Santa Cruz is also like a somewhat smaller city not somewhat smaller, but like a, a city that's like not huge like Toronto. Like I've been to Santa Cruz once in my life. I thought it was a really nice city, like it had good vibes. Um, but the thing with UCSC was that it was just not worth the money that I was gonna be paying for. I did get a scholarship for $40,000 off total. So like $10,000 off each year. But even then I'd still be paying like 50, $60,000 Canadian for tuition per year. And that's just a lot of money and I just didn't see the value of going to an American school and like paying that much money as an international student if it wasn't like a school that was higher up in the ranks. As terrible as that sounds, but it is the reality of what you have to think about when you're going to a school. I just didn't want to pay for that much tuition. I think watching back, one of the biggest things that I also forgot to mention was that UBC and U of T are also really high ranked schools and they're just so much cheaper for domestic students. Like I only have to pay like Five thousand a year for tuition to get the same level of education that I would get if not higher at UCSC so it's just like comparing the costs of tuition and like although there was a big lifestyle change which is what I wanted if I was moving away it just wasn't worth like paying an extra forty five thousand dollars when I could have stayed in Canada for like to pay five thousand dollars a year for tuition just, just yeah I didn't mention that but like I just want to say that now because I think it was missing in like it makes me sound very shallow, honestly, but. Then I had U of T and UBC. So at this point, I already got into my U of T residence and this was, I think it's called like Chestnut Residence or something um, because Cinema Studies is kind of like a branch off of the normal Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. It's, you kind of have to apply to a different kind of residence and Chestnut Residence is 30 minutes away from the regular downtown Toronto campus. That was like the biggest thing that turned me away, along with other things like um, the cold and also cinema studies. I didn't know if I wanted to really do that anymore. The residence was just, I think one of the things that just tipped me over the edge of not going to U of T. Um, the thing with Chestnut Residence is that it's 30 minutes away, as I said earlier, and you basically have to walk to class every day because you don't even get like a subway pass at U of T. So yeah, knowing me, I know I would have just skipped all my classes and stayed in my residence forever. That's the reality of it. Also, the U of T campus is huge. Like, it is huge. UBC campus is big, but U of T is bigger than UBC, and that kind of blows my mind, because UBC campus is already kind of big. And then, basically, after I thought about that, I got left with UBC, and now I am here, and I love it. I think that definitely UBC was the best choice for me. It was like... You just, it was the right choice and I love it. I love my first year. I love university experience. So 
last part of this video is going to be college tips for you guys who are choosing your colleges right now. I'm not telling you how to pick your college, I'm just giving you some tips that kind of helped me and um, got me where I am now. And I love where I am now, so yeah. So my first tip, as bad as this sounds, is to trust the process. Um, a lot of people told me this when I was applying to colleges. Trust the process, you know, it knows what it's doing, like you'll end up where you're meant to be. I didn't really believe this because I thought that everything about the application process was kind of what I could do, like a lot of it was in my control, the essays, the stats, extracurriculars, all that kind of stuff was all in my control and I was like, oh no, I think if I work hard enough I can get into the colleges that I want to get into. And while that is true to some extent, I think that the places that you end up in are truly places that you're going to fit in in. Like for me, I don't think I was meant to go to Chapman as much as I love the school and the city. I just don't think academically it was the right choice for me because some of the average, I was like way above the application averages. So I think they knew that like I wouldn't have fit in there. But yeah, you just gotta trust the process. My second tip is to be genuine. Um, this is encompassing in your application mostly, um, doing your essays and also talking about your extracurriculars. Like just be yourself, like university counselors are literally looking at who you are as a person and if you're gonna fit into their school. So if you're trying to like boast yourself up and like say that you're some really cool individual, which you probably are, but like some saying that you're not, I can't talk, saying that you're someone that's not you is not gonna help you because you're gonna end up at a school and you might not even like it because the university counselors admitted who, who they thought was you but isn't actually you, so that's not gonna help you. My third tip is to get people to read your essays. Um, throughout my entire application process, I didn't get anyone to read my essays, only like two of my friends. And that was a really bad mistake because um, I was always really scared of what people would say about my essay, so I didn't bring it to my teachers and counselor and stuff, but they're only there to help you. So I think you should really bring your essays to people to read so that you can get the critique and stuff that you need. My fourth tip is don't just consider the prestige of the school. I don't know how to describe it. This is a really important tip because a lot of people get caught up in the names of schools, um, Ivy Leagues, UCs, stuff like that. I think for me, part of it was, this was also part of my application process because I applied to like the best film schools, USC, UCLA. Prestige is not always what it's like cracked up to be like That doesn't necessarily mean that the school is good the support service. I mean What am I saying? Of course the school's good. That's why they have the prestige But that doesn't mean like the services that they have in the school is good like the environment the competitiveness competitiveness competition There's a lot of aspects behind the prestige that aren't really encompassed by this like number one ranking so you gotta think about that kind of stuff, um, especially like mental health services. I know that in Canadian universities it has been a really big deal because it's just not the best, I'll put it at that. But yeah, don't just think about the ranking of the school and be like, oh, I'm only going because it's a number one school. I'm only going because it's like ranked number one in sciences or whatever. I don't know. Think about how you're gonna fit into the school and like, if you can really see yourself going there, it, it, I cannot stress this enough, I don't know. It's just, I think that people really get caught up in the superficial stuff about university and don't really think about like, how this is really gonna be your new lifestyle in the future, like university. It's definitely a huge lifestyle change. So yeah, don't just think about that. If you're like caught up in the name, like if you don't really have reasons that you wanna go to the school except for that, there's like the name and that it's a well-known school. Try to reconsider your decision of if you won't really want to go there. My last tip is to tour if you can. Tour the schools, tour the campuses, tour the city, anything. Um, so in the summer before grade 12, I toured USC and UCLA. I really liked the USC campus. Um, UCLA was kind of an iffy campus. I didn't really see myself going there. Um, and then I also toured Chapman, as I said, in the winter break of my grade 12, and I loved it. 
Um, I toured U of T before when I went to Toronto in like high school. I don't really remember when I was like grade 11 or something. Um, but I've never been to Western, McGill, etc. After I got all my offers, I decided to tour UBC and that was probably one of the best decisions of my life because as soon as I stepped onto the UBC campus and started that tour, I literally fell in love with the school. It just, you'll just get that feeling that you know you're in the right place. And when I stepped onto the UBC campus, I just got that feeling right away. All throughout the tour, I fell in love with the school. I loved every aspect about it. I didn't think anything was wrong with it at all, which is a great thing. Like if you can find, feel that way about a school, I think you're on the right track. But yeah, it was definitely very eye-opening to go on a tour because then I knew when I, where I really wanted to go and like stuff like that. All right, I think that's the end of my college story video. I basically told you everything that I feel about the college application process and my entire story. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you have any questions, for sure leave it down below. I will be replying to all the comments and stuff. So yeah, um, subscribe if you wanna see more videos. I'm definitely producing some more university related content and other content that I like to make um, in the upcoming weeks. So please subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.